Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at sigma notation so we can answer questions from exercise 3f. So what is sigma and what is the sigma notation? Sigma is a Greek capital letter for S. It basically means just add up the, um, the bunch of numbers that we've got here. And the way you read this is you basically take all of the numbers from one to five, going one, two, three, four, five, and effectively substituting them into the formula that's on the right hand side of the sigma notation. Once you've substituted them all in, you then add up all of those results. So substituting in substituting in one first, you get two times one which is 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So this is effectively when r is equal to 1. You get 1 when you substitute in r equals 2. You get 3 when you substitute in r equals 3. You get 5 when you substitute in r equals 4. And you get 7 when you substitute in r equals 5. You then add all of these together and you get your answer. So that's how the sigma notation works. You take the numbers from 3 up to 6 substitute them into the formula, work out what the answer is for each of the four terms, and then add up the results. So it means the sum of, this is the nth term formula that we are summing, and this means starts from the value 3 and go up to the value 6. So in this case here, if you substitute 3 into this formula here, you get 5 times 2 to the 3, which is 40. So this is the r equals 3 term. This is the r equals 4 term, this is the r equals 5 term, and this is the r equals 6 term. You add up this um, total and you get 40 plus 80 plus 160 plus 320 and you get 600. And your answer to this question here is equal to 600. Okay, so in this question here, calculate the following. Uh, the sum from 1 up to 20 of 4r plus 1. Um, it sometimes helps to write out and visualise the numbers that you're going to be adding up. So substituting 1 first and you get 5, substituting 2 next and you get 9, substituting 3 next and you get 13. You keep on doing this until you get up to 20, in which gives you 81, and you add all of those results together. Now, this vaguely looks like an arithmetic sequence. Now, an arithmetic sequence, remember, is where we go up by the same amount each time. So D equals 4. And we definitely have 20 terms being added up here. So in this case here, what we need to do is use the summation formula for an arithmetic series. Um, we know that we need to use the arithmetic series summation because this is an arithmetic sequence. We don't use the geometric one in this case. So substituting it n, a and d and working out your answer, we get 860. So this symbol here is just another way that we, they can ask us a question on arithmetic series and on geometric series. In this case here we're going to be adding up the numbers from 1 up to 12 that have been substituted into this formula here. So it might help to write out the first couple of terms, this will carry on and on and on. Um, so we first substitute in 1 and we get 5 times 3 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now, 1 minus 1 is 0, but 3 to the power of 0 is 1, so 5 times 1 is 5. Then we substitute in 2, then we substitute in 3, and we keep on going up to 12, and if we were to substitute in 12, we would get 885 plus 885735. So we want to work out this summation. A is 5. Uh, it looks like here we've got a common ratio of 3 each time. And in this case here we've got 12 numbers that we are adding up together. So this time we need to decide whether we're going to use the arithmetic progression series formula or the geometric progression series formula. Hopefully you've spotted now the obvious answer here is geometric progression formula series. 
um, series formula because we have a common ratio between the terms that we are adding up. Substitute the a, r and n value into this uh, summation here and we get 1,328,600. So this sigma notation here is just another way that the exam board can ask us a question on arithmetic progression and geometric, geometric progression um, just in a, a different format. Um, another slightly difficult question here would be to add up and starting at 6 this time. So substituting in 6, 7, 8, 9 up to 15 into this formula here. So effectively what we've got here is the sum of the 6th term up to the 15th term um, being substituted into this formula here. Now you can do this in a couple of different ways. One way of doing this is to add up the first 15 terms in this geometric progression formula and then subtract the first five of those terms because we only want the first, the, the, the sixth term up to the 15th term being added up. So what you can do here is you can effectively split this up into a series formula that goes up to 15 and then take away the series formula that goes up to 5, which will only leave you then with the um, substitution of 6 going up to 15. So notice here how it has to be 1 less than you are subtracting. So in this case here, S15 is calculated like this. We have a starting term of 5 and a common ratio of 3, with 15 terms being added up. Uh, for S4, Five, we need to substitute the numbers in like this. So we have the summation of the first five terms being 605. But in this S15 term, we've added up the substitutions from 1 up to 15, whereas really we only want the answer from 6 up to 15 being substituted in. So we now have to do S15 take away S5. And we get our final answer which in this case here is going to be 35,871,660. Okay, your turn to have a go at a couple of questions here then. So question five is, yeah, one of these tricky ones where we have to start at a different number and go up to 30. And part eight here is um, working out it in terms of K. So your answer is going to have a K in it for question eight here. Pause video, try these two out, and we'll answer them in a second. Okay then, so I'm going to show you a different way that you can do question five here, and I'm just going to substitute in nine first and call that my first term, substitute in 30 and call that my last term. So in this case here, I'm going to substitute in nine first, so I'm going to get 45 minus a half, so that would be 44.5 as my first term in my, in my arithmetic progression series here. Substituting in 10, and I'm going to get 10 times, that would be 50, uh, so 49.5. Next term is going to be 54.5, and this is going to go all the way up to 30, in which case it's going to be 5 times 30 minus 0.5, which is giving us 149.5. So I know that my last term here is 149.5. Now, how many terms am I adding up here? Well, one way you can work this out is just by counting on your hand. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, all the way up to 30. Another way of doing this is to remember, well, if I was just summing up from 12 down to 1, there are 12 terms in between 1 and 12. So in this case here, I need to do 30 minus 9, which is 21, but add on an extra one because I want to count 30, and I want to count 9, so I'm adding up 22 terms here in total. Now in this case here, the summation for this formula is going to be n over 2 times a plus l. a is the first term, n, sorry, l is the last term, um, in this case here, it's going to be then 22 divided by 2 
um, times by 44.5 add 149.5 and when you add these two together 44.5 add 149.5 times 11 2134 so if you've done this a different way maybe by splitting up the series summation into s30 minus s8 Hopefully you've done it S8 if you're subtracting one series from another. You've done it that way, but you should get exactly the same answer. Remember the, the button on your calculator button, there's a button that's underneath the on button where by if you press shift and that X button, you will get a series summation symbol pop up and you can just type this into your calculator. So you can always use your calculator to check these sorts of questions here. For part 8 here, we're going to solve this question in terms of k. In this question here, substituting in r equals 1, we're going to get um, minus 8. So minus 8 is going to be our first term. And then it's going to be times by minus 2 each time. So when I type in 2 here, I'm going to get 4 times minus 4, which is 16. So my common ratio here is minus 2, and my starting term is minus 8. Uh, how many terms do I have? I have k terms, so I just use the value k. Um, so now the series summation formula for a geometric series looks a little bit like this. a times 1 minus um, r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. So in this case here it's going to be minus 8 times by 1 minus minus 2 to the power of k all over 1 minus minus 2. So in this case here, it's going to make 3. So minus 8 over 3 times by 1 minus um, minus 2 to the power of k. And we could probably uh, include the negative inside this bracket here. So it's going to be 8 over 3, 2 minus 2 to the power of k minus 1. So that would be how I would leave my final answer for question 8 here. So, well done for having a go at those two questions there. Have a go at plenty more questions from exercise 3F. There are lots more challenging questions. Make sure you get used to this series notation button as well. Um, so, have, yeah, have a go at lots of questions from exercise 3F. Do have a go at the challenging questions, the one with an E next to them or one with a P next to it. P stands for problem solving. Um, you may find them too hard, in which case go and seek advice from your teacher who can help you. Thanks very much for watching.